I want to speak to you this morning about faith. And you say, faith, Terry, haven't you got enough? I just had a tumor, cancer tumor cut off my forehead in the last couple of weeks, and it's been a real, real difficult to heal. I've seen the consultant a few times, and uh, yeah. So why is it some people are healed and some people are not? But we'll come to that in a moment. Faith. I want to tell you, we've got a King of Kings and Lord of Lords... He's our saviour. He's a wonderful, wonderful friend. And I want to tell you, you need a close relationship with him. He's for you, not against you. He loves you through and through. He's there. He's redeemed us. He set us free from the law of sin and death. We need to rejoice and know how to be glad and know the joy and the pleasure of his peace, his joy, his love in all our lives. It's what he died that set us free. Are you free today? I know several are, but I know some of us have got a bit of a way to go. What is faith? What is it all about, this faith business? Let me just share. I'm going to share a bit from um, Hebrews 11, because this in in the Bible is a book on faith. And I just share a few things, and then we'll... Well, I can't get it done all this week, so we might have two or three weeks on faith. But just look at faith and see what it says. Hebrews 11. Father, as we study your word, as we look for your word, we do pray by your Holy Spirit for revelation and understanding. Help us each step of the way, Lord God, to keep our eyes fixed on you, the author and perfecter of faith. We give you thanks this day for your wonderful word. And Lord God, thank you for everything in your promises, a yes and amen in Christ. Hebrews 1 says, now let's listen to this really carefully. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. There's a lot in this really. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, we need to bring the Bible into this and not think we can wishful thinking will bring it into being because it will not. It's got to line up with the word of God. I'll say it again. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for. And you know, hope in Greek is certainty. For the certainty that we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. And if you look through scripture, you can see how God moved through so many people to bring his will and his purpose about. Just staggering. And if I went through all this, it would take me probably all the time just to read the scripture. So I'll go through it bit by bit and we will just see how we can get faith built up in us. And I never, ever, please hear me, I never say to anyone that didn't happen because you don't have enough faith. God gave us all a measure of faith. So let's understand we have faith. And how do we get faith? You know it. Do you know what it says? Romans 10, 17. Now faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of God. That's how we get faith. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. That is just staggering. But we have a wonderful God. We have an amazing creator God. We have things that we do not understand. How can it be that God could create the universe because he spoke it out? It's beyond our understanding. It's beyond us who could be so creative as to speak and whoof, the universe was made. Whether it took very long, I don't know, but I still believe it's the, it's the week that it says. I believe God is such an amazing God. So the universe was formed at God's command so that what was seen is not made out of what was visible. So you couldn't see it before. I wonder how many things are in this place 
which you cannot see with your human eye. Loads and loads, if only you could see. By faith we understand that the universe was made at God's command. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended a righteous man. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith he still speaks, even though he was dead. Do you know, much of Old Testament, some of those things we know by faith, these amazing things happened. And so, when it comes to Cain and Abel, does it still speak to us today? Yes, it does, although he's dead, it still speaks to us, because we can see the truth of God's word. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was, command, he was commended as one who pleased God. Isn't it amazing? He pleased God so much. What a life he must have lived. He pleased God so much that God took him from this life. And without faith... It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I love that. I love that. Do you earnestly seek him? Is it your heart to earnestly seek your Lord and God? Have you got that relationship where you really desperately love to get in his presence? You really love to hear his voice, maybe in the spirit. And you know that peace that he brings into your life. It's by faith. Let's just say this. In Ephesians, it tells us, faith is a gift of God. It doesn't say from God. He says, faith is a gift of God. And I believe that's why when we have non-Christians come, and whatever that they are or whatever, and the word is spoken, and the word is sung, and the truth of the gospel is proclaimed, I believe those words do not return void. It could take a year. It could take five years. But when people hear the word, faith which God gives us is kind of comes to being. It gradually comes. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it takes ages. But the faith and the word together we can come and know Christ Jesus. I believe that's how I came to know Christ, through my fellow worker speaking to me for three years about Jesus. And I really didn't want to know. I really wasn't interested. But I thought at the end of the day, I really ought to look at this book and just see what it's about. And as I read through this book, the word of God changed my heart. The word of God spoke to me and faith arose within me to know there is a God. That was the first thing that I realized. There is a God. Now what do I do about it? So many Christians, and I really mean this from my heart, they come to know Christ They have a relationship with Christ, but they never move forward from that. That's not what God meant for us. He wanted to have kingdom values, kingdom principles, kingdom ways of doing things, like Jesus did when he said, follow me. It is impossible to please God if we don't have faith in him. If we have faith in him, you will see and understand. He said he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You can seek him in faith and know his promises because they're yes and amen for us. Think about this, what it says in Hebrews eleven seven. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he commended, he commended the world and because of, of heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. He built an ark. He must have felt like an absolute idiot. There he was, no water, nothing there, this massive, massive boat he built. And they, I know he was ridiculed. But can I tell you something? Don't worry about people ridiculing you. You know if you're truth, and the truth will set you free. Don't, don't think 
that God doesn't know what he's doing. Noah probably thought at the time, well, what is this? What is this? What am I doing? Have you ever got to that place where God was speaking to you and you thought, for me, Lord? I can tell you if, if ever on that apprenticeship I accepted Christ and you told me in a few years or whatever I would become a church pastor, I'd say you are out of your mind. You are out of your mind. But why I want to help you with this, each one of us here could get in certain places with Christ and he will help you through. When you say these things like, I can't do it, he rejoices. He says, I don't want you to. I want to do it through you. You can achieve things in Christ that you never thought possible. Yeah? Have you, know, have you ever thought of those things? He can do things that you never, ever thought possible. We need to really understand by faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. It, that's very often how it is. It really is. When, when God told us to move to Felixstowe, we honestly didn't know it was Felixstowe. We knew as we went in the car down Felixstowe Road and we got to Sainsbury's or somewhere, we turned around. We didn't know, but we felt led to be going that way, not thinking about Felixstowe. And just to say, some of you know, but when we did live in Felixstowe, we had to move away because Nita was allergic to sea air. And they told us it's probably one in a million people who get that. And so we moved away. And so when we really thought at the end of the time, is that really what we're supposed to do? Is that the route we're supposed to take? And I think after a while, God made that clear to us. And so we came to Felixstowe in the car several times, and we prayed around, and we prayed about it. And we shouldn't have done this, because I wouldn't do it now, but we did. And as we were there, we just spoke to the Lord and we said, as we were probably eating our sarnies in the car, thinking, is this really what, what God wants for us? We said, look, Lord, if you genuinely want us to come, we want that apartment which is there. That's what we prayed. It wasn't on the market, nothing. One month later, we had that apartment. I wouldn't do it now because I don't believe it's right in putting a fleece before the Lord. But I just share, I'll just share this. And so we bought that and we moved to Felixstowe. And we had a first person come to Christ was Tracy. It's been pretty hard work ever since. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Tracy. We really do. And you've come on in leaps and bounds. And I say to you, God bless you. Thank you. And anyway, so we had, we had in this apartment an alpha course or two. And we realized everybody was coming to this alpha course, were parking in everybody's places there, and we were in real trouble. So we said, we can't stay in here, we better buy a house. So we bought a house and had them in there instead. Why I'm saying that is, we would never ever have thought we should be in Felix, though. But God led us here. And the way he's moved, it's been absolutely amazing what he's done. Something that I can tell you, I would never, ever have dreamt of. I would never have thought it. I'll just come back to Abraham. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who are heirs with him in the same promise. God promised him. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations built, whose architect and builder is God. This next bit makes me smile. By faith, Abraham, even though he was past age and Sarah herself was barren, was enabled to become a father because he considered him faithful who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, became descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and countless as sand on the seashore. 
Abraham believed God. He didn't know where he was going. Abraham was 100 years old and his wife was 90 when they had their child. I tell you. And they both, and both times they said, and she laughed and he laughed. And I'm not surprised, do you? I wouldn't be laughing if Nita said to me she was pregnant. <laughs> I want to tell you, can you imagine changing nappies at 100? Come on, getting up halfway through the night. Woo, gosh. But God does things that are so amazing. We need to get out of the box of thinking what we thought before, we need to get to a place where we get greater understanding. All these people are living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. Are you an alien or a stranger? I tell you, I think some of these things I used to go to I would be a complete stranger in those places now. They don't mean much to me anymore, I must admit. The world and its problems seem to go very dim to me as I get closer and closer to Christ. I really do mean that. The things that I used to enjoy, I don't enjoy much, hardly anything of those things. And these people, they were living. They were living by faith. They only saw from a distance. And very often, we need to be aliens in this world. People will say such things that show they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have opportunity to return. And I want to tell you, there are so many Christians in life who they return to where they used to be. Don't get on that street. Don't go there. You stop before you've taken two steps. On the first step, you think, this isn't how my Christian life should be. I need help from the Holy Spirit to come upon me and help me and get me through this. How many know that the devil is the first one to try and tempt you to get off? Thanks, Ray. There's one there in the sandbox who knows what I'm saying about. Let me say, he will try every step to take to get you off key with Christ. He is against Christ and always has been. But he knows he's a defeated foe. And we need to know our position in Christ. He died that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Faith comes through hearing the message and listening to the word of God. That's how faith is, how we build our faith. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He was received the promises which about the sacrifice of one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offering will be reckoned, Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. Do you remember the story? He was about to sacrifice Isaac and there was a ram in the thicket and he used the ram. He said, do not, do not. He was testing him. He was testing him. And he will test you and he will test me. How deep is your faith and mine? How, how much do we trust in God's word and God's promises? How often do we turn the wrong way? Thank God for patience and a loving saviour who helps us every step of the way. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and he gave instructions about his bones. It's all in Old Testament. But I just want to come and just share one or two other places in Scripture, and I'll come back to that at a later date. Ephesians 2 tells us this, and it says, a made, uh, made alive in Christ. Ephesians 2. As for you and me, 
We were dead in our transgressions and sins in which we used to live when we followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who now at work in those who are disobedient. For all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the craving, cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. Are you alive with Christ? I think some have never heard of him. You should have a smile on your face. You're going through a tough time. I can tell you I've been through a pretty tough time. But I can tell you the tough time didn't have me. Because I'm, I'm Christ. Christ in me. I'm not Christ, but Christ in me. He helps me through difficult times. He's there for me. He's a wonderful saviour. He's a wonderful, wonderful saviour. It is grace by which you have been saved. Grace by which you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in, the, in order that the coming ages he might show his incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. It's a gift of God. Not by works, so no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I was at a funeral yesterday. A lovely, lovely friend. She was just a, an amazing person in what she did. Came from quite a wealthy family. But she would go down and feed the poor. She would go down into places where, this, I'm talking about Ipswich here, she would go down at night where there was all the knives and all these things around and she would go with food, she'd go with hot drink, she would go down there and if people were in need, she'd give them money. She did this for years and years and it was her funeral yesterday. And if someone could be saved through good works, it would be her. But she was saved because Christ was her redeemer. Let me share. All your good works this is a, are like filthy rags compared with Christ. After you become a Christian, you will do good works because Christ will lead you to do them where and when you can. If you had have said, Neat and I would go and work on the rubbish dumps in Mexico... I'd have said, you've got to bend another thing coming. But we did. And do you know what I can remember, and I've shared this before, and they said, when you go over there, the thing that they love most, these people on these rubbish dumps who live in cardboard houses, nothing, no windows, no doors, just an old piece of sack at the door, absolutely nothing at all. And lots of them were ill, and I, most, lots of them had pus and stuff they just had a terrible state. And I can remember they said, the first thing you need to do in their culture is give them a hug. And I can tell you, the first person I came to had got pus running down their face. And I thought, oh, God, I can't do this. God, this is too hard for me. And I thought, I just went up to her, gave her a hug. It broke it. From then on, I didn't find it a problem whatsoever. Why? Because Christ Jesus had done it for me. It wasn't what I had to do. It was what Christ did. And when you saw these people, you saw kids drinking out of a, a Heinz beans can. I don't know if it was Heinz, but they'd have this little can which they would drink water from. They had nothing. They had nothing. You give them a sweet, you'd think you had given them a shoebox. I really mean it. 
I've never seen anything like it in my life. What a privilege. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to be mixed up with that whatsoever. But God opened doors for us to go. And when we went, it was just staggeringly wonderful. We went year after year, year after year. Why? Because we knew that that was God's heart for us. And God will take you places where you're uncomfortable. He will take you places that you know you can't do it. And he'll say, oh, that's the heart I want. I want people who will do things for me and I'll be living in them to help them. I want to just say to you, I recommend that you come created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God had prepared in advance for us to do. He's got good deeds for us today. He's got good deeds for us every day. Let's walk in the good deeds and the good things that come. Is faith difficult sometimes? Yes, my word, it is. I can remember a great guy, John Wimber. And he was a really lovely character. And we got to know John reasonably well, bless him. And, but a great speaker, a great conference speaker, and a great man who led many, many churches. And he said this, I spell faith R-I-S-K, risk. Take risks for God. Take risks for what he's telling you to do. Do things in the power of his Holy Spirit. Just know that when you're in the hand of God, he will put you in places, he will put people across your path who you may find really touchy, edgy, um, and I think I might share this. There was a lady in a church we went to once, and she was the prickliest person I've ever met. And that, uh, we all thought that. My word, you couldn't get near her. She was absolutely prickly. But under that, she got such a good heart. But I think in the past, she got hurt, and so she, she put a barrier around herself. Well, Christ wants to take the barriers away. He wants us to know that in us, he can rely on us. I wonder if you thought about this, but can Christ rely on you and me this afternoon or tomorrow to start relying on him in our lives more and more? He will put things across your path that you don't want to do. He will put things across your path that is uncomfortable for you. He will do things that will help you grow in your faith. And in doing so, you will know that by faith, you can trust him every step of the way. He has never, ever let us down. Never, never, never. I can remember when we went through some really tough times financially. And I tell you, it was tough. But boy, Nita made a lot out of sausages and... Um, Nothing much on your plate. And I tell you, it was a year. It went on for a year. But it made us be much better stewards of our finances. It made us be much better stewards of what we do. Do we need to know more? My word, we're only on the first rung of the ladder. But I can tell you, it's good on the first rung. But I tell you, is everyone, and I can't go through it today because it's just on 12 o'clock. But let me say this. There's lots, lots more I would love to share with you because faith is being sure of what we hope for. What are you hoping for? For me, I'm hoping to lead a lot more people to Christ. For me, I want to be available to people so I can help them en route. For me, the best thing is Jesus Christ in my life forever and ever. There's nothing better there's nothing so good as to having Christ rule and reign in your life. And I can only say today, what a wonderful saviour. What amazing, amazing saviour he is. He is just utterly and completely dependable. He's there for us. And I say this from past experience. He's there at three o'clock in the morning when you can't sleep when you don't know which way to turn, when you know that things are not going right for you, when you know that there's 
someone there for you. When you know in your heart, he's there to help you. Maybe health issues, maybe anything, maybe. But know this, if you've got friends who will pray for you and with you, give them a buzz. Give them a buzz. Those people who will stand in faith, those people who will be there, you give them a buzz. If you would like prayer today, there'll be people who could pray for you. We very often say this when we say, if anyone would like prayer, come and have prayer afterwards. Do you know what? No one comes and we think, well, we've got the, we've got the healthiest church in Felixstowe. <laughs> no one's got a single thing wrong with them. Everything is perfect. They're all in good health. I mean, what could be better? Don't leave this place today because God, God answers prayer. I remember when Pete came forward, I had a picture for Pete from God, and I told him if he went out fishing that particular day, his boat would sink because there were so many fish. God never lies. I tell you, he had a job to get in. (laughs) He phoned me up and he said, Gary, you come down to the front. He said, the boat is completely full. He had to give some to other people because he couldn't get the boat ashore. It was absolutely full. Sorry? Yeah, that's right. (laughs) What am I saying in that? When God speaks to you, he will bless and other people will come into relationship with you because he, he's be seen by what he does, the love he has for people, the kindness and goodness. May you today go away and know that faith is a gift of God. And want to know more? Well, next time I speak and the next time again, I'll be speaking on faith. Walk in it. You get it from the word of God. I'm just going to turn there so that I get it correct. Romans 10. Verse 17 says this. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. I'll just go on from there, just for two minutes. But I asked, did they not hear? Of course they did. Why do you think people hear and don't come to Christ? He says this, he's talking about Old Testament here. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Again I asked, did Israel not understand? First Moses said, I will make you envious by those who are not a nation. I will make you angry by a nation that has no understanding. He was telling them, he will leave, he won't leave the Jews, but he will get to the Gentiles and we will all know. And then he said, and Isaiah boldly says, I was found by those who did not seek me. That's us. I revealed myself to those who do not ask for me. But concerning Israel, he says, all day long I held out my hands to a disobedient and obstinate people. Let's not be obstinate. Let's be those who are willing. Let's be those who take that step of faith and know that's how Israel saw them. His hand was out for them all the time and he's out for everybody, wherever you live, whoever you pray for, whoever it is. He doesn't want anyone, anyone, not to be saved. It tells me in the word and this word is the truth. So walk in faith. Pray in faith. The person who prays in faith, you will see mighty things happen. Believe it, receive it, and it will be yours. God bless you. Julie, would you like to come up, please?